Hey guys, my name is Marshall McClung. I'm currently Associate Dean of Admission and Digital Media here at Hampton Sydney. I graduated in 2011, and what I'm hoping to do today is walk you around Hampton Sydney's campus. Given the current global situation with COVID-19, we fully understand here at Hampton Sydney that one of the biggest challenges for students and families going through the college admission process is the difficulty in visiting college campuses these days. My hope is that by the end of this video, you will have all aspects of our campus covered that you would be interested in. So let's get into it. We normally begin our tours walking to the Memorial Gates. I firmly believe that the Memorial Gates are one of the best physical representations of our college's history. Hampton Sydney College is the 10th oldest college in the nation. We were founded in 1775. Now, after World War I, we built the Memorial Gates to honor those who had fought and died in that war. In the 1990s, the college thought it was appropriate to rededicate those gates to all of those men who had gone to Hampton, Sydney and fought and died in every American conflict, dating back to the very first, the American Revolution. So you can see the plaques on the gates denoting each one of those wars and the men who served in them. Now let's talk about the birthplace of the college. The birthplace is a really unique aspect of Hampton, Sydney. This building was built in the 1950s and it was originally the law office of Nathaniel Venable. Now the birthplace is where the original founders of the college sat around a table and drafted up the plans for what you are going to see on the rest of this tour. I don't think they could have imagined what the college would become 240 years later, but I think it's really cool that we have this part of our campus sitting here for all to see. Now, normally we don't walk students through the birthplace, but you have a unique opportunity to see this place inside now for the first time. Oh, hello. If you wanna read a little bit more about Hampton Sydney's history, you could just pick up a copy of On This Hill, which was written by John Brinkley, it's a pretty light read, um, as you can see, or you could just go on our website and read a little bit more about the college's history. Now, let's talk about academics. We're gonna start at Morton Hall. Morton, I'd say, is arguably Hampton Sydney's main academic building. It houses government, foreign affairs, history, economics, English, philosophy, really any class that you could sit around a table of 15 or in a room with 25 or 30 chairs, you're gonna be able to hold in Morton. Our average class size at Hampton Sydney is about 15, and we have a student to faculty ratio of about 10 to one. Morton is about as classic as it gets. Some rooms still have chalkboards, but where we need technology, we have it. So in the economics classrooms, they have smart boards. I wanna talk a little bit about Brinkley Hall. Brinkley is our fine arts building at Hampton Sydney. It received a $2 million renovation a few years ago and it really leveled it up to be a great space to study the arts. Hampton Sydney has created a new program this year called the Compass Program. Compass is our experiential learning program which requires students to take two experiential learning courses on campus and then one experiential learning course that is off campus. My favorite Compass example is a photography class that Professor Fox taught on portraiture. She had her students work with the local Habitat for Humanity effort and had them take portraits of those for whom they were building the homes. At the end of the semester, the students were able to invite all of those people to campus to our gallery inside of Brinkley and have them see the artwork that they had done. We have a few other academic spaces. Maples is our classics building. It houses Greek, Latin, religion. I spent a lot of time there as a religion major. And Gilmer Hall. Gilmer is currently our science building on campus, though it's going to be phased out soon. Gilmer currently houses chemistry, biology, physics and astronomy and engineering physics as well. As you can see, the classrooms are about the same size as they are in Morton and other academic buildings on campus. The biggest difference being there's more room for lab equipment for students doing research, which takes me to another point on student research. The ability for guys to get research done at the undergraduate level at Hampton Sydney is absolutely unparalleled. All of these posters are work of students that they're doing in conjunction with a professor. Some of these guys are getting published. Now in the next few years, Gilmer is gonna go offline as as we've recently broken ground on a new science center that is expected to be done in the next couple years. The 
Pauley Science Center will be our new science facility on campus. If you want to read a little bit more about it and see some pictures, there's a link in the description below. With the new construction, we are tearing down Bagby Hall. Bagby currently houses mathematics, computer science, world language, and our study abroad office. And over the next few months and years, we'll be moving those to appropriate spaces as we make room for the Pauley Science Center. All right, let's head to our library. The board's library was recently ranked by the Princeton Review as the fifth best library in the country. I think my favorite thing about the board's library is how cozy it feels. It feels like home. There's leather furniture scattered throughout. There's space for students to work either collaboratively or independently. I feel like on a lot of college campuses, it's very easy for students to just study in their room. But if you swing by Bortz on a Tuesday night, you're gonna see it filled with students getting work done. Also in the Bortz library is our Office of Academic Success. The Office of Academic Success ensures that every student has an easy transition from high school to their freshman year at Hampton Sydney. And that's done through a robust advising program and through student tutoring and faculty and staff tutoring. I think one of the most unique aspects academically at Hampton Sydney is the rhetoric program. Since the college's founding, rhetoric has played a critical role in the college's curriculum. The founders believe that the most important thing a young man could learn how to do is write well, speak well, and communicate effectively. And 40 years ago, we formalized the rhetoric program. This year, we put our money where our mouth is and built the Panhills Center for Rhetoric and Communication. The Center for Rhetoric and Communication houses the Rhetoric Studio, which offers help for students who are working on essays or speeches or even website or social media. We also have space for three classrooms and then a big open area. Finally, the last thing I want to touch on academically is the Wilson Center for Leadership in the Public Interest. The Wilson Center offers two minors, one in National Security Studies and the other in Leadership in the Public Interest. The Wilson Center also offers a four-year leadership program called the Wilson Leadership Fellows Program. This is a program that students who have been accepted to Hampton Sydney can apply to, and that program requires an on-campus interview. More information on the Wilson Center and all of our other academic programs can be found on our website. All right, are we bored yet? Let's stop talking about academics. This stuff's important, but let's talk about student life. At the very core of Hampton Sydney's culture is the honor code. The honor code makes our campus what it is, and it makes our students who they are. The very first night that freshmen arrive, they meet with their individual residence halls after dinner to talk about the importance of the honor code and the code of conduct. The honor code states that the Hampton Sydney man will not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate those who do. And that's coupled with our code of conduct, which states that the Hampton Sydney man will behave as a gentleman at all times and in all places. After the groups meet, all of our students walk to John's Auditorium for the Honor Code Signing Ceremony. Now this is a coat and tie event. It's pretty formal, it's very solemn, and I think it's one of those nights that our guys will remember for the rest of their lives. So that night in John's Auditorium, they hear about the importance of these two codes from our president, from the student body president, from the student court chairman, and then they put pen to paper. They sign their name saying that they will live by those two codes while they're here in Hampton, Sydney, and hopefully for the rest of their lives. Afterwards, all the students who are currently on campus wait outside and shake their hands and congratulate them on entering the Hampton, Sydney Brotherhood. They all walk single file through the bell tower and look at a plaque above them and it says, Huc venite uvenes, which translates to enter here as youth. Maybe one of my favorite traditions at Hampton, Sydney is that four years later, our graduates line outside of Morton Hall and they walk through the opposite direction of the bell tower that they did four years ago and look up and there's another plaque and it says, so that you may leave as men. When combined, you have what is written on our gates as you drive into campus, enter here as youth so that you may leave as men. We at Hampton Sydney are in the business of not just educating the mind, but of educating the whole man. And I think that character building aspect of Hampton Sydney is maybe one of the most important and most unique aspects of our campus. The honor code is so much woven into the fabric of our campus that we hang up honor pledges in every classroom on campus. We even take the signatures of the current students and frame them and hang them in the Brown Student Center, which is a perfect segue into the Brown Student Center. 
The Brown Student Center is about three years old and has been a very welcomed addition to our campus. It houses our Office of Student Affairs, which consists of our various deans of students, dean of housing, dean of Greek life, dean of intercultural affairs. In the Student Center is one of the more unique programs at Hampton Sydney, which is the Fleming Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Guys who are interested in going their own after they graduate and starting their own company or their own business would do well to spend time in the Fleming Center. They offer workshops and classes for guys who are looking to start their own businesses. Across the hall is the Ferguson Career Center. I think arguably one of the most important offices on campus. The people who staff that office work with all of our guys to help them find internships and career opportunities after graduation. I think equally important when you graduate from college is not just what you know or what you learned, but who you know and who you met. They work with our students to help send out resumes to local alumni chapters. And it's worth mentioning that Hampton Sydney's alumni network was ranked second best in the country by the Princeton Review this year. We have truly a network of guys looking out for our current students and recent graduates. Finally, the Student Center is a place to hang out. We've got a rec room space with ping pong tables, pool tables, and a driving range. Downstairs, we have a post office where all students receive a P.O. box. Trust me, you're not gonna be able to open that thing the first five times you try it. And directly across from the post office is the Tiger Inn, or as most of our students refer to it, the T.I. The TI is our hangout spot. There are TVs scattered everywhere. We bring in bands to play and perform down there. There's a menu with a full bar and grill, and there's also a Starbucks coffee shop attached to it. There are also two patios outside with rocking chairs that overlook Lake Shalgrove and the surrounding nature. Now, speaking of food and where to eat, let's talk about the panel commons. There are various stations with different meal lines that rotate in and out each day. If our campus has one space where students, faculty, and staff all interact together, it is the dining hall. All right, you know where you're gonna eat? You know where you're gonna hang out? Where are you gonna sleep? Let's talk about dorms. We have a few freshman housing opportunities. White House, The Carpenters, and Cushing. It's worth noting that Cushing is the oldest four-story dormitory still in continuous use in America. As you can see, the rooms are spacious and the college provides a bed, a desk, a chair, a dresser, and a wardrobe for all incoming students. Everything else you bring on your own. That may be a couch or a TV or anything like that. There are plenty of other housing opportunities for upperclassmen, including Venable, the Blakes, the Alphabet dorms, or even our newest dorm, which is currently being built. The new dorm is going to be a collection of apartments with a common meeting space that all overlook Lake Shalgrove. It is worth noting that we do have a four-year on-campus housing requirement. I don't think you can have that sense of brotherhood and that sense of community if everyone's living off campus and commuting in. So the guys that you live with, you also eat with and go to class with and play on a team with. We do have some other themed housing student options like the Minority Student Union House or the Wilson Leadership House or the Tiger Athletic Club House. Fraternity housing is an option and those houses include Chi Phi, Theta Chi, Deke, KA, SAE, Phi Gam, Sigma Nu, Sigma Chi, Kappa Sig, and Pika, who I think wins the award for keeping up their Christmas decorations the longest. This is a perfect transition into talking about Greek life in Hampton, Sydney. Hampton, Sydney currently has about 48% of students involved in fraternities. I think the biggest difference about Greek life at Hampton, Sydney from other schools is that it doesn't matter which fraternity you're in, you're still gonna hang out with your buddies at different houses. If KA is having a party that weekend, most students are gonna go to KA. There's definitely a comfort on our campus, I think, in knowing that all of us are brothers here in Hampton, Sydney, and Greek affiliation doesn't really matter as much as it does at other schools. Now, I get it, guys. We're in Farmville, Virginia. We're in the middle of the woods. And so we've leaned into that. We have a robust group of students who are interested in the outdoors, and we have an outdoors program called High Adventure. We recently finished a high ropes course on campus that has a climbing wall, and a high ropes challenge course, and it ends with a zip line that takes you across Tadpole Hole, which is one of our many ponds on campus that students can fish. 
And when our students aren't fishing on campus, they might be fishing off campus through a beyond the hill trip over spring break on the San Juan River in New Mexico. Finally, I wanna talk briefly about athletics in Hampton, Sydney. Hampton, Sydney is a division three college competing in the ODAC, which is the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. We have a variety of sports and athletic opportunities in Hampton, Sydney, including football, lacrosse, baseball, soccer, basketball, and many others. There are plenty of opportunities though for students who don't choose to go the competitive route in Hampton, Sydney. We have plenty of intramural sports and club sports on our campus with most of our guys participating in one of those during the academic year. We have a fitness center on campus that all students can use. More often than not, when the weather starts warming up, you'll see a group of guys just playing a game of pickup or maybe throwing around a Frisbee outside of Cushing Hall. And with that, guys, we're gonna wrap up our campus tour. Really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Like I said in the beginning, if there's anything that you don't feel like you saw in this video, please let me know by shooting me a message or giving me a call. My cell number is 434-808-6423. We know our campus is empty right now and we look forward to the return of all of our students in the fall, but I also hope that you'll be a part of that student body in a few months. If you need anything from us, you know how to get in touch with us. Be safe out there and go Tigers. Six feet, six feet. <laughs>